you're a Lego fan or a child of the 1980s, then you're likely to know this kit. It's the iconic 80s Lego Technic car chassis. And you know what that means. This kit, number 8860, was first released in 1980, and in my opinion, is possibly the best Technic kit ever. I'm probably biased. And this is my original kit from the mid 80s. If you're familiar with my channel, then you'll know that I've combined my love of early Technic kits and 3D printing. And ever since my first Lego inspired giant scale 3D printed model, everyone has been encouraging me to scale up this incredible kit. Well, I think I'm finally ready to tackle this challenge. However, there's a huge amount of parts involved and some big technical challenges. So this will be a video series, so make sure you're subscribed to follow the progress. In this video, I'm gonna take a look at the technical challenges and start the build. But before that, let's take a closer look at what made this kit so darn cool. At the front, we have rack and pinion Ackerman steering. This means that the inside turn radius is smaller than the outside turn radius, necessary for proper steering. There's a three-speed gear shifter. It's a little tricky to operate, but when the engine's moving, it works well. Take a look at these. Adjustable reclining seats. Underneath, we can see the differential rear axle and the three-speed gearbox. Back on top, we have these dual shock independent rear suspension. And of course, this incredible four cylinder piston engine, complete with cooling fan. So what issues am I going to have scaling this kit? Uh, well, let's start with the sheer size. I'm going to scale up at the same factor as my previous kits, which is five to one. So based on that scale, this kit will be 2.35 meters long and a meter wide. Now, being that big, one of my main concerns is the weight, as some of my larger kits weigh between 25 and 30 kilos, and they do sag slightly under their own weight. So for this build, I'm going to make the parts as light as possible by using less infill. And I'll also probably end up having to put blocks underneath to support the weight of the chassis. So I'm just going to make a rough calculation of how much it's going to weigh. Now, if I was to take the kit as it is, and I scaled it by a factor of five and I used injection molding like Lego do, then the weight would be 125 times. That's because it's five times, five times five to get the correct volume. Uh, so let's weigh it and find out what that would be. And it comes out at 978 grams. So nearly a kilo of plastic there. So that would be 125 kilos if we scaled it up using injection molding. That's an eighth of a ton. So clearly that's not the case in 3D printing because the parts are hollow. However, the weight is still gonna be significant. Um, so let's take the original tractor kit and weigh that. And then using my scaled up tractor kit, we can know the weight difference and then I can estimate how much this kit's gonna be when it's 3D printed. So that's uh, 0.33 of a kilogram. And uh, so if I was to scale that straight by 125, um, let's have a look, the weight should be 41.2 kilos, but I happen to know that my 3D printed tractor is uh, 24 kilos. So if I divide the 24 kilos by the 0.33 kilos that this weighs, I get a value of 72. So my 3D printed tractor is 72 times heavier than this one. So that means that theoretically, the 3D printed version of this will be 72 times heavier, which comes out at uh, 0.978 kilos, which is that, 
multiplied by 72 is 70 kilograms, more or less. So it's going to be a big lump. I have here one of my original um, Lego tractor 1x8 Technic beams. This is printed in two perimeters, two bottom layers, three top layers, and about 15% infill. Whereas this is a more recent print, and it's the same amount of perimeters, top and bottom, um, but it's got about 5% infill. So I'm going to weigh the two and see what difference there is. So this is 195 grams, and this one is 178 grams. 91% of the weight of this one. So if I use that calculation, I can work out how much the car chassis is going to weigh. So we estimated this at 70 kilos. So if I apply that, 0.91%, it's going to come, sorry, 0.91 is 63.7 kilograms. So it's a significant weight drop, yet I feel that there's still plenty of strength in this Technic beam. Most of these parts I already have modelled from other kits. However, the differential and the suspension units are going to be tricky to model and print. Uh, the suspension can be made a slightly different way. In the original pictures, LEGO didn't use these suspension units. Um, they used traditional LEGO parts, so I could do that instead. Uh, as for the differential, I think it will be printed in multiple parts and glued together, and then I'll add bearings so that it runs nice and smoothly. One issue I found with my other models, like the bulldozer, was that due to the amount of friction between uh, plastic moving parts, mechanisms wouldn't move freely. With this build, I want it all to work. So I'll add bushings and bearings like these into technical beams like this. The tires are also a challenge just due to their sheer size. I have to print them in four parts, but that's just a case of patience. I've done it before. Okay, that's enough talk. Let's get on and build something. Like I said, I'm building this in stages and you can probably tell which part I'm building first. Let's get the bits out. That's a big box of red parts. The bit that I'm going to make first, and it's the part that's made first in the instructions, are the two reclining adjustable seats. And so that's what we should have by the end of this video, or at least two of these, with any luck. Um, now one bit I've just noticed that I need to complete are these um, 12 long axles here. Here's one I made earlier. This is from a, from a previous kit, one of my older kits. And so this is uh, joined in the middle here. And this particular one has a, um, a steel M8 um, studding through the middle to keep it together for strength. But I'm going to try something different on this kit um, to try and keep the weight down. I'm going to use these carbon rods instead. So this square tube. Uh, and being square, it will transfer torque through the piece. I'm just using a simple deburring tool uh, just to clean the edges where you get that slight lip on the build plate. So a deburring tool works quite well, works really nicely on inside edges. If you've got a lip on an inside edge like this, you can use a deburring tool just to take the lip off. Now I need to put a PLA gloop in between before I put them together. There we go. That feels pretty good. This is my Mark 1 12 long axle and it weighs 126 grams. And this is my Mark II carbon joined axle. And it's 100 grams, so there you go. 26 grams saving, pretty good. As always with these parts, the same as my other builds, uh, I don't use any support material. So quite often on the top of the uh, hole here, some of the material does fall down. So I use my fine adjustment tool just to clear the holes out. Obviously, this is another one of my fine adjustment tools. It's quite tricky getting the fit just right on these. So I print two different types, a slightly tighter and a slightly looser fit version. 
Um, but if uh, I can't get them to go on, I just use the, uh, the fine adjuster. I should rearrange these seats so they're the correct distance apart scaled properly for the car chassis and that should be four studs so that would be about there so now that should be matching those front two seats and that's where they'll end up on the chassis so that's 58 grams uh, 3.66 kilos 63 times heavier which is about what we estimated I think I think I'm really pleased with how these seats have turned out and it gives me a good idea of just how impressive this build would be when it's finished. Imagine one scale to the size that would fit in a car. The next part I'm going to tackle is the engine. That's because the chassis has a lot of large parts and I'm going to try using some different 3D printing techniques uh, such as a belt printer for those. Also I think the engine will just be a really nice part to make. Well, I hope you enjoyed part one of this build and maybe you got a twinge of nostalgia for Christmas 1980 something. Please leave your comments below and of course don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you want to see this completed. I hope you all have a great Christmas and a fantastic new year. Bye.